Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you're doing well today. Today we are going to talk about and make some of the bottoms for these two-part vases like this and this. So, let's go! All right, here we go. We're gonna talk about and make some of these bottoms for these vases. Uh, if you've been here any, any length of time on my channel, you probably know and probably have seen videos in the past where I make vases in two pieces like I'm talking about with these. Uh, these two were made with a three pound bottom and I'm gonna make some more of those because I think last time I made them, I only made six of the bottoms and then put the tops on them. And when I got done, I was like, man, I really like those. So, excuse me, coffin fit. Uh, but uh, I, I thought, man, I really like those. I want to make some more. So uh, I definitely need more of these for my wood kiln coming up. And so we're going to make some more of these three pound bottoms today. And then I'll come back and probably in a separate video, I'll come back and make the tops and put those on, uh, like I said, in another video. But I thought these were really cool, really nice pieces. And I'll just show you how I make the bottoms and then uh, come back and put the tops on in another video. Well, I hope you guys are doing well, as I've probably said multiple times now. <laughs> I really do. With all the things that are going on, that's, uh, you know, of course, all of us are thinking about it. And uh, it's just, it's a crazy time right now in the whole world. Uh, not just where I live or where you live or, or even our country, but it is a crazy time. Uh, but uh, I'm still thankful that uh, I'm here, I'm alive, and uh, I can be home making pots. Now, whether or not I'll have my kiln opening for people to come buy them, I don't know, but uh, I'll just stock them up until I uh, get back to normal and people can come buy pots. So, um, for now, I uh, just finished up uh, packing and shipping out some stuff from my Etsy sale. And uh, once again, I'll thank all of you guys that have uh, supported me there. Uh, it's really helpful and uh, very appreciated. So anyway, there are, uh, there are a couple different reasons that I make vases like this. Uh, number one, uh, if you uh, think about the one that I, the one I just showed you, uh, that had the really skinny neck, that shape would be pretty difficult to make in one piece. Not that it's impossible by any means, but it would definitely be difficult <clears throat> with the way that one ballooned way out at the bottom, then came way back in. Uh, you could do that. You'd probably have to use some pretty stiff clay to make sure that. Uh, uh, the shoulder, the clay could support itself on that shoulder coming in that sharply and having that skinny of a neck. You could definitely do it, but like I said, you'd have to use uh, a lot more stiff clay than what I'm using here. So, <clears throat> like I said, there's a couple different reasons. One is that the fact that uh, uh, it's it's a little bit easier in a couple ways. One, I don't have to use very stiff clay, which uh, you know, I don't mind using a little bit stiffer clay at times, but if I can get away with using softer clay, it's easier on my body. It takes less, uh, less energy and, and it's less stress on my joints for me to, uh, center and throw, uh, softer clay. Um, and, uh, and I guess also I can get more of the shapes that I really like by not having to worry about that clay being softer, especially when you belly out the bottom really wide. I don't have to... I don't have to worry so much uh, about that shoulder being weak, and I can really get a lot of shapes that I really like out of the clay uh, by making them in two pieces. And it's really, uh, I think, probably, um, it might take a little bit more time, but honestly, the times that I've tried to make really intricate shapes like that out of one piece, it takes a while to make uh, all in one piece as well because you have to be so careful. Um, well, making that shoulder to get those shapes. So, anyway, uh, like I said, just just trying to uh, give you guys some reasons why uh, why I would do that and, and why it might be beneficial to you uh, to make pieces in two sections. 
another really cool thing uh, with this is that I can make these these bottoms really round and bulbous because I really don't have to worry at all about I mean I bring the top back in uh, but it's just curved in and, and there's no there's no weight on top of that you know that that top's not there as far as the shoulder putting weight down on there so I can really get a nice round shape and uh, just something I love about really nice round pots <laughs> Now it does take some time um, getting used to, of course, even throwing a bottom like this with a shape like this, but also um, to think forward about, okay, well, what kind of a top do I want to put on it? And so that will change kind of even the shape of the bottom that you'll make based on what style of top you want to put on it. Um, because I've, at least just based on what design you want to make and what shape you want to make, uh, but it takes, it just takes some practice, some time uh, of making a few of these to figure out, okay, do I want a high shoulder? Do I want like a mid shoulder? Do I want just a really round shape? Uh, you know, all those kind of things come into play uh, and you can kind of just uh, play around with those shapes and then put different tops on them and then decide which one you like better uh, as far as the design. <coughs> <coughs> as far as the shapes that you're looking for. <clears throat> Sorry, I pretty much got over my cold, but then uh, at least where we live in North Carolina, the pollen started falling, so we went straight from having a little bit of a chest cold to now it's just, you know, congestion from pollen and all that other stuff that's falling and, and making, making the world green and colorful again. So uh, I'm not complaining about it, but uh, it definitely is a, is a, it is a challenge. So anyway, so there's the first one, um, and we'll see. Let's get a ruler to measure how big this is, just to give you guys an idea of scale. So that one is eight inches tall, and overall width is probably about seven and a half. The opening here is about just under four inches. So I'll give you an idea of what size um, that I got out of that, and um, I don't see my screwdriver. Alright, hold on a second. Found it. I'm back. Alright, so there we go. There's a, a pretty round one. Doesn't have much of it. Like I said, doesn't have a high shoulder. Just kind of has that mid belly. Um, and like I said, I'll play around with making different shapes of these bottoms. And then the tops that I put on them, I'll try to tailor to the fact of, okay, well, does it have a high shoulder or a mid or just a nice round shape like that. And uh, like I said, all that just comes from uh, really what, you, what you're looking for in shape and also just the experience of, uh, of making enough pots similar to this that you can, you can do that. So um, as you guys know, I, I've done, I do a lot of things uh, uh, that, are, that are interesting or at least that I've learned along the way to try to make the whole process a little easier on my body um, and quicker in some ways. One being the fact that if I'm throwing larger clay balls, I'll, th I'll center them in two different pieces or three different pieces. And you guys have seen me do that several times. Uh, these are small enough. I'm just centering these in, in one piece. This is three pounds. Um, and another one being that I'll throw pots in sections, whether they be sections like this, where I'll let them stiffen up overnight and then add another top. Uh, some pots I throw in sections right after I make them. Uh, and those, of course, are definitely made different than the way I'm doing these. Um, but I've just tried to be smart over the years. Uh, number one, I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not uh, the strongest, biggest person in the world, and I don't want to just try to manhandle everything. Um, and I'd like to be doing this a long time, and if, and if I can keep from wearing out my joints and my wrists, that would be a, a, a great thing to do um, so that I can keep doing this for a very long time. And uh, like I said, I'm just not the strongest, biggest person in the world. And if I can find ways that, that make it easier on my body to make pots and still make the pots that I want to make, then uh, that's what I'm interested in. And you guys probably saw a post recently where I made a couple 50 pound pots. Um, 
and I've tried out a new technique. I, it's not new, it's new to me. Uh, I've been making a lot of my big pots like that in thrown sections, and then uh, uh, made also made one uh, with coils, uh, which is pretty much made as far as the drying technique. You still work the same way in the sense of throwing. I threw a base for it, and then I used a torch to dry that out, and then I came back and added a coil, and then I threw that, and then and then torched that, and then threw another, and then put another coil on. And I'm probably gonna, I've, I've made, like I said, two large pots like that for my wood kiln. I really want to make one more, and I don't know if all three of them will fit, but at least give me the choice of picking which one I want, or which two I want to go in my wood kiln. So, uh, and I might, I might actually do the third one on a live stream. We'll see. Um, we'll see if that works out or not. I'm definitely uh, going to be doing that very soon. So if I do it, it'll be very soon. So like I said, I'm just pulling these, uh, and you can see I kind of start the shape as it is, um, and then I, I get my little foot made there, and now I'm going to start shaping it. One of the things that I've learned in, uh, in making really round shapes as well is that as I'm shaping at the bottom there, uh, the top part of my hand that's touching the top is really helping keep the top steady as I'm really forcing that bottom out into that shape. And another thing that I've learned that I do is, I, is a lot of times I'll shape uh, from the top going down uh, and that seems to help. Uh, it's kind of like you're working with gravity rather than against it. So at times I'll, I'll take and I'll start at the top uh, like this and then I'll, I'll start pushing out and then I'll work my way down instead of up and it seems to work out really well sometimes. It really just depends on uh, uh, how stiff the clay is and, and really where I want the shape. If I need more belly at the bottom, I'm probably going to start at the bottom. If I need more belly at the top, then I'm probably going to start at the top and work my way. And sometimes I'll do that where I, I went like three quarters of the way up and then I'll start at the top and work my way back down and meet kind of where I stopped shaping from the bottom and, uh, and meet there in the middle. And with these, I'm not really worried about having to, to leave these any certain thickness um, because when I go to add that top, um, this is gonna be stiffened up pretty well so that it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I, I normally, when I stack uh, freshly thrown pieces, I put about half as much clay in the next section as the one below it. <clears throat> so I would do like a, if I was doing a 20 pounder, I would do like a 10 and then a six and a four. So I'm doing a little over half of the piece that's below it. With this, honestly, I could take a whole nother three pounds after this stiffens up and put another three pounds on top of this. Now I don't need to because of the shape that I'm going for, but these I'll add like probably a pound and a quarter uh, top to them and, uh, and make those necks that you see. So there's number two. We'll uh, move the camera around to the other side so that as I'm making and shaping the next one, you can see it from a different angle. All right, here we go with uh, number three. I don't know how many of these I'll make, but uh, make at least six, if not another nine or 12 of them. I want to let you guys know I really appreciate all of the, as I always say, all the support on the YouTube channel and the Etsy sale, uh, but also appreciate the, the comments. You guys have, uh, have definitely been uh, commenting, and I don't mind at all when you guys mention uh, what you would like to see uh, in a video or like to hear me talk about. Uh, I keep those in a, in a uh, notepad on my phone, so if you ever have things that you want to hear me uh, talk about or explain, uh, I definitely do. I do. I do read all those and uh, respond to all my comments. Still, it may take me a few days sometimes to get to them, uh, but I definitely read them all. And uh, and I write down any of the ideas or things that people want to hear me talk about. And uh, I'll definitely eventually get to all of them. So, uh, or at least that's the plan. So. Uh,
All right. So like I said, I'll, I'll do this, just like I do a lot of my pieces, I start by throwing that basic shape, cut off that extra clay around the bottom, and then I'm gonna start shaping it. And uh, I'm gonna push in the bottom a little bit more to start my shape. And then I come back before I do my next pull, and I'm gonna define that foot at the bottom. So I'm gonna come up off of the wheel head just a little bit and then push in and leave that clay protrude out there. I'm gonna go ahead and shape through just to kind of just to kind of finish out. It's kind of, it's kind of like a pull, honestly. When I go and I push in that clay at the bottom, if I just stop there and then I fix the foot, it's kind of like I've, I've threw that clay out of whack a little bit at the bottom, but if I if I kind of keep the pressure there and I continue to do it all the way through, then I've kind of I've kind of like controlled uh, the clay that I that I that I manipulated at the bottom. I, I hardly ever like to to just start something and not go all the way through with it as far as the the form goes, because I feel like it, it can really mess up. Um, really mess up the balance of the piece and just make it uh, give you give you a wobble later on. I don't know if that's making sense, but um, I just try to think through things that I'm doing as I'm doing them. And sometimes I don't know why I do what I do. I don't really think about it anymore. But right then, when I when I pushed in at the bottom to start that shape, I thought, you know what? I, I could just you know I need to fix that foot that I just formed. But I'm like, I really feel like I need to take that clay and, and just kind of pull it through that shape. And uh, I was thinking, why do I really need to do that? And so really it was because I felt like I'd, I'd started something there at the base. And uh, you know, by altering it that much, I'm like I really need to pull that all the way through so that I can kind of finish off and, and even out all the clay from top to bottom. Like I said, I don't know if that's making sense 100%, but uh, that's why I did that instead of just pushing it at the bottom and then and then uh, and then fixing that foot right away. We'll try something with the next one as long as my uh, head doesn't get in the way. We'll try filming one from above, and uh, we'll see what that looks like. If it doesn't make it into the video, you know it didn't work out too well. <laughs> Alright, well there's shape number three in that one. Uh, yeah, that one's still pretty round. Um, got a little bit of a higher shoulder maybe than the others, but uh, there's that one. Hi! this looks cool you guys might be up there from now on we'll just shoot all my pots from all the videos from up above you guys could feel like you're up there just watching from the ceiling you got the you got the cheap seats in the top of the rafters <laughs> I figured this angle would uh, maybe give you guys a perspective on things that I'm doing, my hands are doing, that I don't think about or don't know to explain. I have a lot of you guys mentioned that just watching me throw helps you, so I'm like, all right, well, we'll just do that and do it from different angles. Maybe that'll help you guys out. Like I said, my main goal here is of course just to get pots made for my wood kiln but I do hope to uh, inspire and entertain you guys as well Lord knows that we can use a little uh, distraction from all the craziness at the moment and what's going on so 
Not that we don't need to pay attention to it and be smart, but uh, there's no point in getting all crazy and out of sorts because things that are not in our control, there's no point in getting all uptight and worked up about them because if you can't control it, then, you know, worrying about it is really a lost cause. So if we're doing all the things that, if we're doing all the things that we can do, then uh, the rest of it we'll just have to hope and pray if that's your thing that uh, things will get better and that people are uh, safe and healthy I've had the idea, and I might, I might actually record it tonight as a separate video. I've had the idea of, of recording a video with like mood lighting, turn all the lights off in my shop, and just have my, uh, just have my camera lights on, or at least one camera light, and throw like that. I think it would look really cool in video. I'm just wondering whether I'll be able to see well enough to, to throw something nice that way. I think with all my experience, I could probably still make something decent. I might try it tonight just to see what it looks like. I think it looked pretty cool. I've been taking a lot of my photos uh, for Instagram and my uh, thumbnails with my Nikon, my digital SLR camera. I record all my videos with my iPhone and, uh, and that does a good job of taking pictures and video, but it's just the quality and the depth of field that you can get with a Nikon uh, or with a digital SLR that you can't get with a cell phone, or at least it's a lot harder to get. So I've been doing a lot of stills with that with that SLR, and uh, but it made me think about because I've taken several photos where I've controlled the lighting that way, and you guys have probably seen them where you get some hard hard light on one side of the piece, and I've taken those with my uh, with my Nikon instead of my cell phone. But still, being able to record that, probably in video, you could probably get the same effect. Just having that one light source be from one side or whatever. Now, the thing that I wasn't doing, that I'm supposed to do when I make these, is that I've got a, uh, I've got a spot on my wheel next to one of my bat pins right there that has a bunch of X's that I've made next to that bat pin. And normally what I do is I take and I, I put some clay on the, on the bat right next to that bat pin so that I know when I go to put these back on the wheel and put that top on that I can line that up correctly so that I put the bat back on the wheel the same way it came off. So I've got three of them that I didn't do that to. I can still usually find it. Um, if it is off center at all, I can just switch it around the other way. Um, some of these bats, of course, it may be drilled perfectly centered and then there'll be no problem. All right, guys. Well, there we have it. There's the four that I made on camera. And uh, at the beginning of the video that I make where I put the tops on, I'll show you all the different shapes of the bottoms if they vary uh, much at all. Uh, but I will uh, I'll show you those then. And because uh, I'm going to get back to throwing a bunch more of these bottoms for these two part bases. And uh, as always, thank you guys for being here. And if you like what you've seen and you've been inspired by it, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button, the thumbs up button, hit the notification bell so you're notified when there's new videos. And also when I do live streams, because I'll be doing more of those. Uh, there's a good chance I'll be doing more of those very recent and very in the very near future because of uh, all that's going on. I can't really go anywhere or do anything. So uh, might as well stay home and make pots, which is really what I do anyways. Um, and in the process, I might, might as well do some live streams and more videos. So anyway, thank you guys as always. You're awesome and I appreciate your support and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.